Hi guys, welcome back to the Do It Yourself YouTube channel. And today's video is all about how to hang a heated towel radiator. Probably really echoey and horrible, but we'll have to just live with that. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button for me because there's going to be loads of this sort of content coming up. So there will definitely be something to help you out along the way. Before we make a start, just note you're going to need some plumbing tools, your usual grips, adjustable spanner, screwdrivers, general DIY tools, level, um, tape measure, drill, if you're drilling into tiles, tile drill bits, that sort of thing. And you're also going to need some PTFE tape. So there's a few bits and pieces to get together before you make a start on this one. In this scenario we've got two tiles coming out of the wall, so we've got angled valves to go on there. But you might also find that yours are coming out the floor, so there's a few variables, but this video is mostly just showing you how to actually hang this on the wall itself. So stick with me, let's make a start. Right, so this is our cross water towel radiator. Um, I've already put the bung in the top, as you can see there, and that has a bleed valve on it. But you'll find you'll have a bung in one of the top holes that you need to fit. That'll have a rubber o-ring on it, you won't need to put PTFE tape on that. Just tighten that up and that will seal nicely. Obviously I missed that bit off the video, but uh, it's relatively simple anyway. Right, now we've spun the radiator over, you'll see you've got two holes in the bottom here. That's for our valves to go into. Your valve types will vary. These are two cross water lock shield valves. They're angled ones, but you can also get straights. Um, they're just direct valves. So basically that goes onto your copper tail coming out of the wall. It's got a copper olive in there. You'll tighten that onto the copper tails. And these pieces of the valve here need to be inserted into the radiator. So I'll show you how to do that first. If you're dealing with chrome valves like this, before you touch this with an adjustable spanner, just grab yourself a bit of insulation tape. You can use a cloth if you'd prefer. I just like to stick a bit of that around there, just to stop the spanner from scratching all the chrome up. Obviously everything I do here, just repeat on the other side. Now before we insert this piece of the valve into our radiator, what we need to do is either apply some PTFE tape to the thread to seal that thread, or you can use Loctite S55, if the camera would focus that'd be great. But you can use either, whatever you're comfortable with. If you're using PTFE tape for this, I'd suggest about 12 turns, that's what I like to use. Um, make sure you put this on in a clockwise direction. Break that off. Now we've got our PTFE tape on there, that's ready to be inserted into the radiator. Um, before we do that, we'll repeat that on the other side. So they're ready to be inserted into the radiator now. Grab yourself a radiator allen key or a radiator spanner. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description. It's a pretty cheap tool, but without it you're going to struggle. So grab your valve, you can see it's got the hex key in there for the radiator spanner. And then we'll just wind that in. You don't want to over tighten these, just nip them up. Because if you over tighten them you'll strip the thread out of the radiator. Obviously repeat on the other side. Right, that's that bit of our preparation done. What we need to do next, you'll find in your packaging, you've got these wall mounts. Now they'll all look a little bit different. Basically this part screws to the wall. You'll see you've got a screw hole in there. And this part mounts to the radiator. And this little bit here will hold it onto the radiator itself. And it can be adjusted on the wall with a little grub screw like so. But I'll demonstrate that when we put it on the wall. But what we do need to do is refer to the instructions. So in this case, it's 210mm from the side on the bottom run of the radiator. And at the top, it is under the second rail, okay? And it's 40 mil from the edges. But yours will differ, so you need to look at your instructions and that'll tell you where to mount these. So you have to place that bracket on the inside of the radiator. Uh, the easiest way is to lay the radiator flat to do this bit. Loosely put the retaining part of the bracket on the top. Don't fix it tight yet until you've got it in the place that you want it to stay. So now make your measurement. Now you can nip that up again, don't go mad, they're only plastic, you don't want to crack them. Repeat that on the top ones. 
Now if for some reason you've not been provided with measurements where to put these, I would suggest putting them as far to the outside of the radiator as you possibly can so that you've got a space to hang a towel. Right, that's our brackets installed. So now we'll move on to marking out um, where we're going to put this towel radiator exactly. Obviously it's going to differ for you. Um, I'm going to be drilling through these tiles. I always find the trickiest bit with hanging these is either having someone to hold it for you or a way of holding it in place. Um, I just use a couple of boxes, a couple of tool cases, get it perfectly at the height that you want it um, and then it, it frees you up to actually mark out where you want to drill your holes. I'm quite lucky in this scenario, I actually have a grout line running right down the centre of these two copper tails so I know where my centre line is, otherwise you need to find your centre line for your radiator to make sure you've got that perfectly centered. That should be quite self-explanatory. You could either use a laser level or a spirit level to find that center line. Switch my boxes around because, switch my tool boxes around because I couldn't get the height right with the last one, but they are now the perfect height that I need them at. So once you've ascertained that height, what you now need to do is grab the little slide and wall brackets, pop those on the back. Once you've done that, grab yourself a spirit level and sit that either on the top of the radiator or on the two brackets. Push the radiator back so it's sitting on the brackets. Hold the radiator level or have someone do that for you. Just draw around those brackets. Can be a bit tricky to get the pencil in there to do this. So repeat that step on all of your brackets. Now we've got them brackets marked, we can lift the radiator back away from the wall so that we can drill our holes. Right, so you can see there we've got the circles that we just drew and we need to screw this piece to the wall. So line your bracket up now in the circles that you just made and just put a little mark in the middle because you can see there's a hole in there. These do have a bit of a slot on them so there's small adjustments possible up, down, left and right but not a huge amount so we need to get it pretty accurate. So those marks that we've just made they're the points where we now need to drill. Before we go any further I need to attach these valves to these copper tails that are coming out of the wall there. I'm not going to show you plumbing techniques today and how to isolate a heating system and all that sort of thing. What I will say though is I'm working on a live heating system with a bung in a gravity fed tank. That means I can't have both pipes open because I need to create an airlock. Um, so I'm going to have to do it this way where I'm going to put these valves on one at a time and then I'll come back to the video once I've done that. Uh, if you're working on a dead system or a drain down system you can open both these pipes up and just put and put these bits on the radiator and then slide the whole thing on. In my situation I can't do that. So I'll be back once I've done this stage. Now you can see the valves are installed. What I'm going to do now is just offer the radiator back up just to double check that them valves are in the right place and that everything lines up before we go drilling holes in the tiles. So now I've checked again I can see that everything lines up, the valves line up, the original marks that I made line up so we'll go ahead and drill these centre marks that we've made now. This is not a guide on drilling tiles. Um, if you want to find a video on that, maybe I'll do one in the future. Stick a comment down below if you want to see that. If not, there's plenty of guides online. Obviously the usual practice is applied. Check what's behind the wall that you're drilling into. If it's a stud wall, it needs to be strong enough to hold a radiator full of water. Bear that in mind. Hole drilled. Let's assume you've done all three holes now. You want to do what I've done here. Attach the bracket in place to the wall. Grab hold of your bracket and the screw provided and the wall plug provided. If you've got tiles, I'd suggest you push it past the tile because otherwise when you do the screw up, you may crack the tile. So that's what I'm going to do now is put that wall plug just past the tile. I'll have to trim the, the lip off to get that to go right in the hole. Then we'll hit it in with a screw and do it up. You'll probably have been provided a washer and a screw of some description. Place that down inside the bracket and through the hole. A bit fiddly, like so. Place the screw in your plug. So I want that plug to go deeper into the wall. And now tighten your bracket up. Don't go mad, because if you go too tight, you can crack the bracket. And repeat that on all your brackets. So we've got all three brackets screwed into the wall now. Make sure the grub screws on the sides of these brackets are facing outwards because if they're facing inwards it's going to be really awkward for you to get your hand down there and do them up. So the little holes 
make sure they're accessible. Just check these are leveled up because they do have, like I said before, small adjustments on them. Offer your radiator up, sit it on top of your valves so that they're in place like that and then you should be able to slide that onto the brackets. What I'd suggest you do now is get your valves in place and actually tighten them up. Now they have an O-ring inside so you don't need to put any PTFE tape or anything like that on there. They'll seal up with a rubber O-ring so we just need to nip these up. If you've got plastic pipe or pipe coming out of the floor and you've got lots of movement you can level the radiator up first, put your grub screws in and actually get that in its final position and then do your valves up. But when you're working with copper, I find it easier to do it like this. You don't need to go crazy on these, just nip them up. Go, that's nipped up. Repeat for the other side. And there we go, that's the valves done up. What we need to do now is grab a level and just level this radiator up. As I said, you can slide those brackets in and out. Once you've found the level and got it where you need it, get those little grub screws that go into the sides of the bracket, which lock it into position. Get them started. And this is why it's important that you left these accessible. Get them started. And then continue going around the radiator and finding the correct level. That is now perfect. So we can just go around and tighten all these little grub screws up now, which will lock the radiator in place. There we go, that is perfect. All the grub screws are done up. That can't go anywhere now. Valves are done up. All we need to do now is put these caps on, just put them on, hide the screw up. There we go, and that's in place, going nowhere, absolutely perfect. So what we can do now is just make sure that your bleed valve is done up at the top and we'll go and liven up the heating system and fill this radiator. Now the heating system's back on, open up the lock shield valves or TRVs, whatever's on your radiator. Open up the bleed screw at the top. You can hear the air coming out of there. You can hear the radiator now starting to fill. As you're doing this, I'd suggest you check for leaks. And there we go, we have water. That is now fully fitted and finished. Right, I hope that's helped a few of you out on how to install a heated towel rail. If you've enjoyed this or if it's helped you out, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because there's going to be loads of stuff like this coming up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.